Hello again, I am Blunty, and I like video games. Sometimes I like sharing my experiences with video games. Sometimes that's with pre-recorded and edited video right here on the YouTubes. Sometimes I live stream to Twitch. I'm also Australian, which is why I get asked so often by my fellow Aussies what settings I'm using to stream with. Because, you see, if you're an Australian who wants to stream to services like Twitch, you probably have a bit of an issue. Most of us do. Compared to other first world countries, our internet sucks. We rank 44th in the world, actually, when it comes to internet access speeds, with an average download speed sitting at a pathetic 6.9 megabits per second. And upload speeds, the part important for streaming, is even more catastrophically shite. I, for example, have an ADSL 2 Plus connection. I, in fact, get twice the average download speed of an Australian. And according to speed test, I'm faster than 74% of my fellow Aussies. But that's still a comparatively plodding 14 megabits per second downstream. And my upload speed is just 1.7 megabits per second. Ugh. Now then, I'm going to step you through the settings for OBS, which is the streaming software that I prefer and have been using for quite some time now. There are other options out there, but the basic settings, or at least the concepts behind them that I'm going to be telling you about, will be applicable to most other streaming software options out there, like, for example, XSplit, which is the other popular choice for Twitch streamers. Understand it though, these are the settings that work for me. You may have to tweak them to suit the speed and stability of your connection. My aim here is just to give you a basic understanding of what's important and to give you a starting point to refine your own setup for a stable, nice looking stream. This is not a comprehensive guide, it's just a walkthrough of what I do and, you know, why I do it that way. And hopefully it will be helpful to at least a few of you out there. So, first things first, after familiarizing yourself with OBS's layout and controls and setting up your basic scene modes, and perhaps I'll do a video on that sometime, but for now I'm just going to assume you've got the dead set basics done and move on. So, pop up to your settings, head straight for the broadcast settings panels and select your streaming service. Most likely this will be the most popular choice, Twitch. Doing this will pop up a bunch of red text warning you that the defaults OBS starts with aren't what Twitch wants at all. You can ignore the details here and just hit the optimize button down there at the bottom. This will shift some of the things it's bitching about to Twitch compatible settings automatically for you. Now, here comes the important stuff. Firstly, you'll need to copy and paste in your stream key. This is just a string of alphanumeric text that's basically like a login for Twitch, so OBS can actually have access to your Twitch account to actually stream to. You get this key from your Twitch dashboard page. Oh, and do not share your stream key information with anybody else. Treat it like a password. Next, you'll want to select the FMS server. Don't worry about that acronym, it doesn't really matter. Just know that this is the Twitch server OBS connects to. It's where your stream gets ingested. This is where your stream gets fed to Twitch's network and then out again to your viewers. Now, before about a year ago, Australians usually had to connect to the San Francisco server or the Singapore server. Neither was ideal, each had their own particular issues, and it hamstrung our bandwidth and stability options quite a bit. But it's all we had, so it's what we used. Wonderfully though, now we have a local Australian ingest server, and it's made streaming much more stable. It's like night and day to what it used to be. And it almost doubled the bandwidth I could use to get a nice stable stream running. Once upon a time, I was maxing out at 360p at pathetic upload speeds. Now I can do 720p. So go ahead and set that. And if you are from somewhere else in the planet, obviously set whatever is closest to you. Annoyingly, this isn't always going to be the best option. I, for example, had better luck with the San Francisco server than the significantly geographically closer Singapore server back before the Aussie one went up. So you may need to experiment a bit if you have issues with whatever one is closest to you. But it's a place to start. Now we're done here onto the broadcast settings. Apply your changes and move to the encoding settings panel. And here is where your mileage may vary quite significantly, actually. You'll want to run a speed test on your connection, find out what your real-world upload speeds are like, and then use about 80% of that as your setting for your max bitrate for your stream. The bitrate is how much data is actually used for each second of video going out. The more data you have to play with, the cleaner and less compressed your video will look at the other end. 
So why not just use the full upload speed of your internet? If more is better, why not use it all? Well, because you don't want to choke off your whole connection. You want some headroom for the sake of stability in case your upload speed fluctuates and to leave some space for the other things on your network to get in and out. With my upload speed at around 1.7 megabits per second, or 1700 kilobits per second, I found through experimenting that I get a really nice stable stream humming away if I give Twitch 1400 kilobits per second of my bandwidth to play with. For the custom buffer size over there, this is one of those, unless you fully understand why you're changing it, just leave it alone kind of things. If you're running a relatively recent NVIDIA card, you may also have the option to select the NVIDIA NVINC up there. NVENC. What this does is basically instead of using your computer's CPU to do all the heavy lifting of video encoding, it passes that workload off to the video encoder hardware built onto your GeForce graphics card. The same hardware, by the way, that does the shadow play recording magic. My advice, though, especially if you're dealing with a low upload speed, is to leave it alone. I have played with this, I've run some tests, and what I found was at low bit rates, the CPU encoding is actually cleaner. I love the onboard NVIDIA video encoder. It does a friggin' amazing job at locally recording gameplay, where I can give it a proper amount of data to use, but it's just not that great at trying to do its magical thing when you only give it the piddly amount of bit rate that I'm using to stream with. But feel free to try it for yourself, your mileage may vary, or perhaps there's some new driver trickery that has come out since I recorded this that suddenly makes it much, much better. So do some tests, use whatever works best for you. You can leave most of the rest alone, but drop down to your audio encoding options, set 44.1kHz, why not, and while the default bitrate setting for audio is ok at 96, I like to give my audio a little more room to sound richer, so I go to 128. But remember, audio and video share the uploading bit rate, so the more you give audio, the less your video has, so don't go overboard. Apply your settings and we're ready to move on to the video settings. Now, with the bandwidth I'm dealing with, I can push out a 720p 30 frames per second stream of acceptable quality. Some people out there will tell you that like 2000 kilobits per second is the absolute minimum for 720p, but you know, I get by at 1400. But how good your stream looks and sounds will vary by game type, by the way. The balancing of resolution and bitrate depends a lot on what you're playing. So the 720p at 1400 kilobits per second I use is acceptable for slower games I've streamed like Pokemon and Minecraft and even more detailed adventure type games like Uncharted will be okay-ish. But if you want better clarity and less compression artifacting for faster paced games, you can sacrifice resolution but keep the same bitrate settings. With fewer pixels shared between that same amount of data, your stream is going to look a little bit better, a little bit cleaner, run smoother, which may very well be nicer to watch even if it is at a lower resolution. For fast games like competitive FPSs or racing games and the like, stuff with lots of fast movement and lots of detail, you may find yourself better off dropping to 540p or even 480p. I know some Twitch users who use the 616p option and claim it's indistinguishable from 720p by the time all the encoding and streaming is done, and they might be right about that. You might not be able to tell the difference in any practical sense by the end of the day, but... I would personally avoid using 616. It's kind of a non-standard resolution and, vitally for some people, it is not a Google-approved resolution if you're wanting to later export your Twitch streams to YouTube, for example, or if you're recording them locally while you stream with the intent of uploading the cleaner recording to YouTube later. You may hit some issues with 616. Again, mileage may vary and YouTube's recommended video settings for upload may shift with time, so make your own choices, experiment, test, try. Next, and this isn't strictly required, but I also like to set my base resolution, this is the resolution that OBS's stage is set at, to be the same as my streaming resolution. The reason I like the base resolution the same as the streaming resolution is, well, twofold. It means there's no scaling that has to be done, so less processing power used and less detail lost in the act of scaling. But it also means when I'm setting up my stream scenes and templates, I can make sure that everything is at a resolution and scale that's the same as what the stream is dealing with. If you're working with a base resolution of 1080p, say, and only streaming at 480p, you may, without even noticing it, be displaying text that you can read fine on your end, because you're dealing with 1080p, but is utterly mushed by scaling and compression at the other end. Again, it's not essential, I just find it makes things a bit more straightforward and simple. 
In the audio settings, you'll need to select whatever microphone you're using, and you might have to set a microphone delay to make sure that what you're saying syncs up with what video is being streamed. There's a few factors at work here that will cause sync issues, and everyone will be slightly different, so some experimentation on your part may be required. So just make a local recording and play it back and check your microphone sync, either with what you're doing in-game, or if you're using a webcam, obviously, if Lips syncs correctly. This will take a little while to dial in properly, a little fiddling, a little back and forth, a little guesswork, but for me, about 350 milliseconds delay works. Now on to the advanced settings. Yeah, probably best if you're watching this video, you probably shouldn't be fiddling with them. You can leave them at the defaults and be okay. If you've done your homework and know exactly how these options affect stuff, then yes, you can get a small amount of extra clarity improvement for the quality of your stream, but it is usually pretty minor, and doing it wrong can be pretty detrimental pretty quickly, so unless you know exactly what you're doing, don't touch them. The other stuff here, same thing really. If you know what you're doing, then a fiddle may be in order. Otherwise, the defaults will serve 99% of folks just fine. So then, that's the basics of how I've got my streaming set up. It's the best I can do with the upload speeds that I'm dealing with, but, you know, my streams in general are nice and clear and stable with clean audio. I don't get too many complaints, and I'm happy with how they look. Sure, I'd love way more bandwidth, but, that's you know, this is the absolute fastest internet connection I can get where I live right now, so it's what I have to work with. But hopefully, this has been useful, or at least interesting for you, if you are a fellow Australian, or somewhere else in the world with a crappy internet connection, and you really, really want to try this streaming thing again. You know, this is what I do, this is how I do it, and this, you know, is the reasons why I do it how I do it. Hopefully it's made some sense to you. Give it a go, let me know how you get on. Uh, but yeah, I'm Blunty, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.